Good afternoon, traders. Welcome to this week's weekly outlook. So, we um, yeah, we changed things up a little bit. We're not really covering the Asian Open anymore. I don't think uh, it's relatively that exciting unless some really major is going on. So, we're just going to run over how things have been going today. So, you know, a bit of an end to last week. I'm sure everybody's pretty well aware of how uh, things went down last week and how they finished up on Friday. But we will just revisit that and we'll just have a look at uh, some of the main markets uh, moving towards today's uh, London session um, open. And um, yeah, we'll just run over some of the, the key news that's coming out this week. It's not as busy as last week. Uh, last week was, you know, there's a fair bit more uh, chunky things um, hitting. So obviously we just start with obviously the key ones last week. So they had the FOMC. Uh, that sort of set off, um, not panic, but we'll just switch over to the dollar index. And um, you can see, it definitely did, you know, set off some pretty big, you know, some decent moves and um, mainly, you know, with the dollar trending down pretty hard. Uh, we saw that backed up on uh, Friday. There was a really sharp pullback though on Friday. Uh, today, the dollar is trading a little bit higher at this, at this stage to that basket of currencies. And um, we can see, you know, just how sharp that, you know, that retracement was after, uh, you know, it hit those pretty decent weekly lows. It did change the dynamic of uh, things a bit. So we can see going from what looked like a pretty decent looking continuation type pattern. We had a move up, higher, low. Nice move up, stall at resistance, which failed. And then, yeah, enter the FOMC. We had a crunch and then we had that real crunch on the uh, on the Friday. So as you'd expect, risk currencies definitely benefited from that. And um, we can see the Aussie at the moment getting back up. Testing that resistance up at 0 0.6630 and uh, at the moment it's sort of just treading water below there. It looks, I wouldn't say overbought, maybe it's just a touch overextended. We saw a bit of selling coming in, trimming some of the gains. The euro and let's update that. So the euro, similar story as well. This bit of a mirror, mirror image really of uh, what we saw on the, uh, the dollar index and uh, the pound. So what we're really looking for at the moment here is we've got these moves up, we've got trend lines starting to be broken. Uh, what we really maybe want to see is a bit of a pullback and then a new move up with a higher high just to show that this is a trend here and we are going to see a new move up. So I think that's one of the keys we'll be looking to see at the moment. We may see a small pullback obviously from the dollar and um, we'll be looking to see if that forms a nice lower high and then continues to decline maybe saying that this trend is starting to become, uh, you know, in a little bit of trouble. Uh, the other thing to watch though is we have a higher low here in a continued trend uh, pattern. We missed out on the uh, higher high, but this could still be a higher low in the trend and we can see that trend here. So don't be surprised if we did see further moves up. That's the real key area that needs to be beaten though. That's at that 106.40. That's really the key resistance. And I think it's gonna need a little bit of help from things fundamentally and um, obviously, Price charts don't just jump and move themselves. There's always, you know, influences feeding the underlying, which is, you know, creating these um, price candles on your chart. So those underlyings are, ge are generally driven by, you know, fear and greed and all the rest of it, plus fundamentals. So they can be short term, long term, and uh, you know, overall. So they definitely come into the picture, and we'll be continuing just to keep an eye on them. To see, and then we'll be looking to see if we get some decent patterns here. So don't write off a new higher, uh, a new um, lower, high, sorry, higher low. And also don't forget about this key resistance, which has to be beaten. Now above that, then we have some pretty key resistance as well, up at 107.03. So there's a couple of points of interest there if we do see a bit more buying up. But for the meantime, buyers need to get back in business and get the market moving. Now if that does come into fruition, we could then see a bit more selling on currencies and do are we going to see new lower highs then come into play with trend continuations lower say on the pound and the euro the aussie's in a slightly different position um it you know it's more of a sideways um pattern now with a bit of an expanding type um, range there um, you can see how it's expanding outwards and to the bottom so do we see this key resistance remaining play does the dollar have a bit of a fight back do we see a pullback and then a move back up now one key one coming up for the uh, aussie dollar this week is the uh, local interest rate decision which is coming out on 
Tuesday and um, that's the Australian cash rate. So you're looking at a hold of 4.35%. There's been a little bit of conflicting information coming through. Um, we've gone from expecting rate uh, cuts this year to you know expecting on hold to potentially maybe expecting a couple of rate rises due to the inflation figure sorry the, well the CPI slash inflation figure that came out previously and that did surprise uh, to the upside so will we see the cash rate remain on hold will we see a surprise um, rate uh, rise to the upside um, I doubt we'll see a rate cut but who knows but yeah the odds of that are pretty low I might, um, I might add so will we see a you know a rate so if we did see a surprise rate uh, hike, expect the Aussie to jump. Uh, if we see it a hold, depending on what comes out in the statement and some of the hints that we do here from Bullock, do we see you know it sort of continue to buzz around, or do we see a bit of a pullback, or do we see a, a, a short test? A lot with the Aussie and the euro and the pound is going to come down to the US dollar and how it does uh, act over the next 24 to 48 hours. So that will be you know the key influence. One of the key influences going there. Gold at the moment we've seen um, higher price after a pretty um, choppy choppy days you know to end last week so we saw a few moves down we saw a move up last week and um, we see a move up today it's very choppy we see that that really short-term key support at 2284.70 and there's plenty of resistance waiting for buyers once again up at uh, 2338.16 and then a bit more resistance around this level here at 2318.96 so oil is another key market we just want to touch on it had a very big move last week to the downside classic little uh, lower high pattern here uh, a nice you know support break we did see a bit of a hold up which may have been visually a little bit confusing for traders but then once it got going again and broke those lows it was a fast move down so yeah the good old theory about labor low breaks really did come uh, into you know come clutch last week with that with sellers once they really you know got through that low it was one-way traffic all the way down so price continues to sit around there we've had a bit of a higher open after a gap um, it does look a little bit oversold on the short term and we'll see if there is a bit of a pullback and if sellers do sell that rally once again if we do see uh, further lows so after a very nice run-up that we have seen pretty you know for quite a few months with crude we are now seeing a pretty of a bearish pattern overall the trend is still up wouldn't even say it's reached the 50% 50 point uh, FIB ratio area. Uh, so we'll see if it does have a bit more move, uh, room to move down. And then we will see if, you know, fundamentally if anything does change on the short term and then we do see a little bit of buying. That was a very nice pattern here though. Nice doji spinner at the top, nice lower high, fast trend break, first decline up and then down. So that was a nice classic looking uh, pattern there. Um, some of the other markets will run over stocks. So stocks had a good day to finish uh, on Friday with um, some of the factors coming in from the jobs data and um, we did see the US indexes, you know, the Nasdaq's really led the charge with a 1.99% gain. We saw 1.26 added to the S&P, 1.18% added to the Dow and then uh, on the small cap we saw just under a percent at 0.84% added. So overall it was a very strong, um, you know, strong session to finish the week. Futures wise at this stage we're seeing some very small gains. You were 30, uh, you know, just in the positive, and we are seeing, you know, now sitting uh, in the red at this stage, and the S&P also in the red. So the US 200, which is the small caps, is got a small lead at this stage, and we are seeing the ASX, you know, having a solid day. Other indexes in Asia today at this point, we are seeing the Nikkei, you know, just no. I just want to check something for one moment. So the Nikkei um, does have a bank hold. Well, there's a bank holiday in Japan today, and there'll also be one for the UK. So be, that's two bank holidays uh, today. So some of the indexes, again, just looking at some of the indexes. So we are seeing the Dow, the Dow Jones NZ is down a bit at this stage. The ASX is up 0.63%. Uh, Chinese indexes are mixed, but we are seeing the Shanghai uh, component is trading at 1.05% higher. Uh, the Hang Seng is also trading 0.05% higher and we are seeing the, Cop the Copsy as well um, is trading, it looks like it is also on a bank holiday today um, as with Japan. Forgive me if I'm incorrect there. So some stock indexes are higher at this stage. I think we'll see if they do follow suit into the open today with you know, the, the Dow, sorry, following the Dow, the S&P and the NASDAQ higher, if we do see uh, gains on uh, the European indexes, mainly the DAX and um, the Stocks 50 and also on the CAC. And we'll just have a look at some of the performances over those indexes recently. And 
starting with um, the France 40. I don't know what's happened to my German 30. I'll have to look for that after we finished here. So we can see here key support at this level remains at 7922. We can see that the buy up on Friday. So we'll look to see if they can add to that with a move back up to test maybe those moving averages there or the top of, um, you know, Spy here at 80.45. Now, the UK 100 may not be trading today due to a bank holiday in the UK. So, that had a very nice finish to the week. It has a very, a very different, you know, price wise, positioning wise, it looks a lot different from uh, what we're seeing on the CAC. It continues to beat that previous resistance point and run up. So, I think when, when the market is online, we'll just look to see if it does pull back, uh, that those pullbacks are higher lows, like here, these examples here and we continue to see a move up what we don't want to see is a distribution pattern which is quite wide range um, and or you know a decline a lower high and another fast decline that could be a bit of a, a statement there by sellers on the short term and then we'll just have to look to see if it can find support or not so moving on really just to finish up with some of the crypto markets cryptos are mixed today but we did see some very nice uh you know, buying to finish out last week, a little bit of range play at the moment. So we can see Saturday and Sunday here after Friday. So it is trading at levels, you know, not seen for a while. It's pulled back those losses we did see, you know, in the previous week. And um, we can see this resistance here at 64031, a little bit more resistance up at 64890, and then further resistance up at 66566. So we want to see if there's a pullback here, we get a nice higher low, and then we want to see a break of this resistance area here and then move back up to test these levels here. If we do get a break, at that level if those things are coming to fruition uh, that could be a good sign that Bitcoin is trying to get something going and is trying to get that overall uh, uptrend back on track now uh, Ethereum we won't cover all of them but we can set a key support that continues to be observed here at 29 even and uh, we can see some resistance here similar story to Bitcoin if we have a pullback we want to see a move up and break of this resistance breaking price out of this current range uh, pattern once we're above this area here uh, or through this area here it's either in a downtrend again or we're starting to see a short term uptrend so uh, that could also be a sign that um, this correction could be coming to an end and we could see you know further upside so keep an eye on definitely on this um, price pattern as well a couple others just randomly so Solana which is a bit of a favorite and one I do also like as well, it's a, it's a good bunk coin and we see this key support at 1.22, we want to see that hold, then we want to see a breakout of the range at the 156 area, just showing that the uptrend is going to continue and um, buyers are you know, starting to overrule. Uh, Ripple which has had um, an interesting time, XRP token has, you know, it's had a bit of an interesting year so far, we had a really strong decline back down to, you know, 39 cents had a nice fast move back classic lower high pattern here a pullback it has stopped though we're seeing a higher low here a lot of support in you know, really anywhere below that 47 point and um, now there's resistance really presenting up at you know 52 it it's looking okay but it does have a lot more work to do it has seen itself uh, hit a lot harder than compared to some of the other cryptos you know ie this example right here so we really want to see a break above this level and some some nice patterns of you know higher 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 low moving up uh, to see if it can get back on track. Uh, it really hasn't really been the same, you know, since it did make that that really nice high after that part, you know, that partial win against the SEC. We've never really seen it regain that momentum at once, you know, it previously had, and it's just really been struggling. So we've even had like a bit of a range here that was tested to the downside, uh, and overall. You know, it just does continue to look like it's in a, a real ranging base pattern uh, at the moment. So, can we get a move up, break that level here, and can we get a, a new test back up here? Would be the key I'd be asking. But so, without um, you know, holding you guys up to too much more time, uh, we will wrap it up there. Um, the key, obviously, the key coins just keep an eye on gold. You know, it's interesting the short term support there. I think some of the you know currencies at the moment are quite interesting, and um, we will just you know finish on. We'll touch on the yen uh, when we have a bit more time next week. So, some of the you know the the US dollar and some of the of the majors trading against are quite interesting at the moment, and then you know. Some of the US indexes as well. Sorry, I just have to touch on a couple of them. We can see that breakout here. So what we I do want to see here is if we do see further buying, we want to see a pullback and then we see a higher low and a new move out. And then like with cryptos, are we going to see you know this breakout here turn into a new trend? So I'll be keeping, be keeping a bit of an eye on that one as well. And similar over on the uh, NDX 100 in the same situation. Be looking after a pullback to see if it is moving back up higher. If we can get you know buying ideas going out of that as well so 
that's a couple of the markets, you know, stock indexes are keeping an eye on as well. So, all right, um, without rambling too much, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much for your time. It has been, you know, 14, nearly 15 minutes. Sorry about that. All the best of your trading. Wish you a fantastic week and keep an eye on the uh, RBA's rate decision that's coming out on Tuesday. And then the Bank of England, which is coming out um, on Thursday local time. And there's more bank holidays coming out that day as well. But the Bank of England rate decision. Then there's the 30-year bond auction on Friday and then GDP for the UK as well on Friday and we also have Canadian employment change and um, prelim UAM consumer settlement for the US. So Chinese CPI coming on, on Saturday. So thanks very much. Wish you all the best of your trading. Thanks again and bye for now.